Hey, hello guys and uh, welcome back with another video. In this one, we're going to we're going to do a quick controller setup since uh, the one I have on my YouTube currently as of now, I'm going to delete that video and yeah, it's just going to it's just going to be gone because it's outdated. Um, you know, War Thunder has released many updates since and it appears that they broke some of the controls. I there is a problem that happened after an update. Uh, I can't remember if it was this update or the past one. Uh, but it broke some of the controls and they don't work. Uh, some of the buttons, they don't work exactly as they used to anymore. So I had to remake my control setup. And I just want to show you guys how I'm doing that. And I just want to make a quick note. Uh, I am going to um, post a Reddit um uh, post showing you guys how to do this in a more detailed way or I guess the same But it's gonna be in reddit. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a link in the description so that you guys can see the program that you need to download and Yeah, all that stuff uh, I um, Since you guys are here already I'm gonna tell you right now the program that you guys need to download is DS4 Windows I will put a link in the description as well. So just Keep eyes on that. Uh, a quick disclaimer, if you're already on PS4, obviously you do not need to uh, download any software. And if you're on Xbox, please feel free to follow along. Uh, this is pretty much very similar for the Xbox controller. You can set them up to the buttons accordingly. Anyways, let's dive right into it. Um, so notice that I went for aircraft, for real controls, control mode, put known, virtual instructor, obviously no, auto trim, no, toggle control mode, you don't have to do anything with that. Uh, so I will tell you guys what the most important parts will be. Uh, in fact, you know what, let's do the most important parts right now, the parts that we really need to worry about. If you guys look at my videos, uh, you guys will notice that the way my camera is set up, I can look around and the second I take my finger off my right stick, uh, my camera stays there and it's really nice and smooth. And I'm going to show you guys how to set that up in just a minute here. So what you want to do is you want to navigate down to the camera controls down here, camera controls, and we're going to go ahead and set this up. So how do I do this? How do I have this set? Well, the key is in view in battle air X axis. All right, let's go ahead and set this one first. We're going to do the x-axis and then the y-axis, all right? So viewing battle, x-axis. Let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, so how do we do this? First, you do detect axis and you move your right stick, left and right. You see how that's working. Then unclick out of detect and test it, make sure it's all working. And it is working. Uh, click some other buttons, make sure that nothing else is activating the same axis. All right. What's the next thing you need to do? The next thing you need to do is you need to go to reset access value. And this is really important. You guys have to make sure you have this exactly as it is. So this is going to be, and you need to do it exactly as I tell you, okay? The reset access value will be the right stick. Push it in. That's the right stick. You push the right stick in. So we have the axis here, and then we have the, whoops, we have the, um, the reset access value set to the same stick we're using to look around. Just push it in, click it like a button. Um, now, what is the next thing that we're going to do? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a dead zone. We want to have roughly 1.5. We can adjust it later if anything. Non-linearity, leave it at one. Invert axis, no for now. Relative control, for you guys it should be like no or something like that. Relative control has to be yes. This is what allows you to have a smooth uh, look or, you know, to look around. So relative control sensitivity, we can put it up to 100 right now. If anything, we can adjust it later. Relative control step, 0%. Multiplier, you want to have this uh, uh, one. I like to keep it a little higher because I, I have enough practice with the camera. So I like to keep it pretty much all the way up. But for you guys now that are starting to use a controller, um, yeah, do that. Anyways, we're going to have this exact same setup for the y-axis. Um, the only thing that's going to change is the stick. So auto-detect and move the right stick up and down. So moving it up and down works fine. Dead zone, 1.5, same as the other one. Uh, next thing is relative control step, 0. 
100% and make sure this is at 1. All right, there we go. We have those things uh, ready. Uh, and oh yeah, I forgot something. Reset access value. Make sure you set this to the exact same button. Now it's going to tell you that you already have this to something else. And that's fine. We set it up for the X axis. We actually want this to be the exact same thing for both X and Y axis. So click add. Okay. The same stick. Push it in. Just like we did with the X axis. Now these two are set. Now let's go ahead and test them. See if they work correctly. So hit close. Hit continue anyway. And resume. All right. So first thing you want to do is you want to look around. See how it looks. All right. So that's working fine. I can look around. Release the button. It's looking around just fine. Now, if you want to center your view, you don't really want to have to like move the view or the head all the way to the right or all the way to the left to center the view. You don't want to have to do that yourself. So you want to set up a button. That's the same button we just set up. Reset axis value. The right stick. Push it in. Boom. It resets automatically. See? Boom. Resets automatically. All right. Let's go back to the controls. One more thing that we need to do here. Let's um, let's go back down to the camera controls. Uh, let's leave it here for a second. Go to common controls, and we're gonna uh, adjust the smoothness of the camera. That's fixed here. Camera smoothness. All right. We're gonna go ahead and take that up to roughly 50%. 50% is a really nice place to put it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make your camera float around a little bit like this. You see how it's floating around? It's not so stiff anymore. Uh, this is actually going to help you focus in on your targets. It's going to help you track them better because your movements are not going to be so abrupt. Um, anyways, so we got the camera set. Uh, the camera is working just as we need it to. Um, um, so the next thing we need to do now, the next biggest part of uh, the control setup is we need oh make sure your sense of flight is on zero by the way because this is just gonna make your your camera you know like your head bob up and down left and right as you turn that's not a good thing to have in sim um it is if you are you know if you want immersion or stuff like that but if you don't it's not really a big deal the next thing we want to do guys this is a really important part we're gonna control with the we're gonna work with the main control axis all right so mouse wheel aircraft you don't want this you, you you want to say no none your aircraft mouse wheel is not going to do anything all right mouse wheel multiplier just leave that we're not doing anything with that the next important thing that you need to do is throttle axis throttle axis so click on that now this one's going to be a little weird we're going to set this up to be the square and the circle so increase value you want to do square and decrease value you want to do circle so for you Xbox guys, what I just did, you can see that here. Increase should be your X, decrease should be your B for Xbox players. Uh, PS4 players or people who have the PS4 on PC like I do now, um, increase is the square, decrease is the circle. All right? Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to... Um, uh, we don't need dead zone. We don't need nonlinearity. Relative control. Yes, we need this. Now, in here, we're actually going to have a control step. What does the control step do? The control step, basically what it does is, if you click the button, it goes up to a certain amount. So we're going to go ahead and put this to 30%. All right, what does this mean? This means every time you click the square, your speed goes up by 30%, or your throttle goes up by 30%. So you click it once, 30%. Click it again. 60%, click it again, 90%, um, and so on, uh, respectively for decreasing the speed, same thing. Uh, so it's almost set. There's going to be a few changes we need to do in here probably and in here, but just leave that as it is right now and click OK. Let's test it, see how it works. Um, all right, so center your view and let's speed up. See, I just clicked it, 30%, 60, 97, and then web. Um, check it. If you hold it, you can increase the speed by a little bit. So let's go back to it real quick. Uh, main control axis. Go to the throttle axis. And here, where it says relative control sensitivity, we want to put this down to maybe about 50%. That's a good level to have it at. Click OK. Close. Now, when you hold your button, you can actually set your speed to whatever number you want. Um, if I were you, Alright, sorry about that. For some reason, my, my mic keeps shutting off. 
So I'm hoping I'm still recording my voice. That's really important to have in this video. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. Uh, back to the control sir. So the throw axis here, uh, you're going to see that we have um, in 50. I'm, I want to put it down to 30% because I want to have more control of where my speed lays. Right, so now when I hold the square, see, my speed goes up slower. So I have more control of how I can set the speed. But if I click it, it goes down 30% straight up. So you can click it multiple times and take it up. Or you can click it multiple times and take it down. So it works really nice. Um, so that's good. We got the speed uh, control settings. All right. Uh, the next thing we want to do that's really, really, really important. It's we want to do the main control axis for um, roll, pitch, and yaw. All right, but actually, before we do this, we need to do something. We need to do manual engine controls. And the reason that we need to do the manual engine controls, guys, is because, well, in here, we need to turn on the engine and stuff like that. So engine control mode. I like to set this to be the end key on the number pad. Toggle the engine. This is control I. I always make this be control I because whenever you just set it to I, sometimes you want to type something in the chat box and you accidentally hit I and your engine shuts off. Really annoying. So I use I usually put toggle engine or to turn the engine on and off to control I. Left control I. Let's go ahead and do the mixture. Uh, how do we control the mixture? So um, the mixture do maximum value. You want to do seven on your number pad. Minimum value four on your number pad. All right, um, and relative control. Yes, you want to do relative control, uh, and you want to put the relative control step to five percent so that it goes up and down five percent. Uh, relative control sensitivity, put it down to fifty percent so that you have more control of where it goes, and that should be good. All right, the next one is going to be the propeller pitch. This is really important, guys. Um, propeller pitch basically controls the power output to your propeller. Basically the RPMs. Uh, maximum value, you want to do 8 on your number pad. Minimum value, you want to do 5 on your number pad. Notice how I'm setting it up. Uh, the number on top is to increase. The number on the bottom is to decrease. So if we look back at the mixture, 7 is on top of 4. So 7 is to increase, 4 is to decrease. If you go to proper other pitch, 8 is to increase, 5 is to decrease. All right? Same thing, relative control. Put this to 50%. Put this to 5%. And just how I have it here, exactly as I have it there. All right, we can do any modifications later. Uh, now, this is really important. Toggle auto prop pitch. Basically, when you're flying your plane uh, and you switch from automatic controls to manual engine controls, the propeller pitch, it's still going to be automatic. So you still have the ability to set it up so that it's manual. So click here and the manual engine controls, I mean, I'm sorry, the toggle auto prop pitch, it's actually going to be on top of the eight or the slash key. Um, so on your number pad, it's right on top of eight, at least in my keyboard. Um, so we got the prop pitch and the mixture. Now let's go for the radiator. Radiator and oil radiator are both going to have the exact same setup because we want to control those two radiators equally for simplicity. You can set it up differently if you like, but I have it in the same way. So in this, I like to use 9 on the number pad and 6 on the number pad. Right to control step, 50% here and around 5 here. Same thing for oil radiator. Maximum value, 9. Yes, we already have a button assigned for this. Click add. Minimum value, 6. Again, we already set it up. Yes, click add. Right to control. Uh, sensitivity, 50 and step percent um, so that's already set and then the same thing toggle auto radiator set this to the asterisk or whatever key is on top of the number nine on the number key um, rpm controller tuber charger this is something that you're not really going to use a lot unless you're flying something like a p47 or something like that i don't really i wouldn't worry about this don't worry about this learn how to use this guys first if most people don't know how to use manual engine controls so learn Play with it. See what it does. Um, learn how to use these. And then this one, it's going to be intuitive for you. Trust me, it will be. Um, the supercharger. The supercharger. This makes your propeller spin faster or slower depending on altitude. It basically makes you fly better depending on how high you are. Uh, the supercharger, I typically like to put this... Uh, shit, I forgot actually. 
Um, <laughs> I'm going to do the right key of the zero on the number pad, so the period. Um, yeah, replace. I don't care about that. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's uh, what I have so far for my manual aim controls. Okay, so now that we have this set up, we can go ahead and we can jump back to the main control axis again. Okay, this is the next most important part. All right, the roll axis. Okay, so roll axis, pitch axis, and yaw axis, they're all equally important. All right, so roll axis, we want to use the left stick. So left stick, left and right for rolling. Deactivate the axis and then test it, see how it's working. Then use your right stick and your other controls and just make sure that nothing is getting messed up here. Whoops, shit. I screwed up, sorry. There you go. All right. It's working wonderfully. So, anything else we need to do for roll axis? Uh, nope. Everything looks good. We just need to set up the axis, I believe. We're going to test it. We're going to see if we need to do any changes. Pitch, same thing. Up and down. There you go. Uh, there's actually something we do need to do. Uh, we want to set up a dead zone. Since our controller joystick is pretty small, we want to have a little bit of a dead zone. So 5%. Uh, 0.05. Technically, 5%. So we, we don't don't put invert. We'll, we'll test that later. Uh, so let's go back here and set up a small dead zone of 5%. Right there. Um, that's good right there. And then now we need to do the yaw axis. So for your axis, we're going to use the left and, um, damn it. All right. Uh, just do R plus L trigger there. R plus L trigger. Uh, what that is, is your triggers and your controllers. So the, 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 R, the L2 and the R2. So for you guys on Xbox, this should be the left and right trigger. I think that's self-explanatory. Uh, you do not need a dead zone for this because one button does not interact with the other. Uh, you don't need this. Yeah, you don't need any of that. So that's good. Now, the next thing you need to do is since we are using controllers and we have a relatively um, low amount of correction ability because our sticks are small, uh, you want to take the sensitivities down to 0%. All right. That's how you want it to be. Uh, actually, the yaw, yeah, yeah, just leave it at 0 and take the force feedback multiplier down to zero. Uh, in fact, don't even use force feedback multiplier. Uh, anyways, that's uh, that's good right there. Uh, let's go ahead and close this and test all of our inputs. All right. Anyways, what did we do at first? Um, hmm, my camera is looking around slowly. <laughs> I'm not used to that. The first thing we set up was the engine controls. Okay. Engine controls. Hang on, guys. Uh, okay, sorry about that. I just had to make sure my voice was still being recorded. All right, engine control. So let's turn on the engine with Control I. All right, Control I is working. Let's go ahead and before before we test our control surfaces, which, by the way, is working. That's left. That's right. Roll. And our elevator. Let's pull up. And that's working correctly. That's pulling up right there. And let's pull down. And that's working correctly also. You guys can see that right there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and check our engine control types. All right, so manual engine controls. Hit the end key, and right there, manual engine controls. Hit it again, auto engine controls. Let's go to manual engine controls. Uh, there's something you should know about BF-109s or German aircraft. Uh, your propeller pitch, you have to be very careful with your propeller pitch. You have to be careful how you control your RPMs, because if you control your RPMs and you misuse it, in other words, if you go too high in RPMs, usually about 55% RPMs, um, basically what's going to happen is your engine is going to die. This does not happen with American aircraft, um, for example. American aircraft, you can go full 100% propeller pitch and you're not going to burn up. But the Germans, they will. So be careful with that. Um, Anyways, see, I can't control it because it's an automatic pitch, even though that we are manual engine controls. So what I do is I hit the slash key on top of 8, and boom, now I'm on auto engine control. So let's pull it down. All right? And we can see the RPMs uh, right there. That little knob right there, let me see if I can 
yeah, this right here, guys, this is your RPMs. This is where you can see your RPMs. Not that you are going to understand that because, well, it's German. But, yeah, that's what it is. So we're pulling it up here. Watch, our engine might die here when we put it to 100%. Um, hopefully not. But, yeah, it works. That's my whole point here. Um, the mixture, it works, although this plane doesn't have any mixture controls, so you don't need to worry about that. And the, um, the radiators. 9 and 6. Let's test that out. Let's put it to manual engine con manual controls for the radiators and we're putting it up. 5% each time. It works. Put it up, put it down, and then put it to automatic so it works. All of that works. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and test the supercharger. No supercharger control, so that also works. Um, switch back to manual or automatic engine controls and then now we're go uh, we're going to go ahead and test this thing in flight. So, all right, let's go ahead and put up throttle slowly. This is one thing with the German aircraft. Uh, they're not too friendly when it comes to taking off. They tend to pull to one side. My controls are not complete yet, so come on. There are a few things I haven't set up yet, like flaps and stuff like that. I have not even gears. I don't even have the gears set up yet, but we just want to test this thing, make sure the controls are working fine. All right, so yeah, I cannot pull my gears up. Like I said, I haven't set that up yet, so we're probably gonna end up dying here, but no big deal. Uh, all right, so this is uh, right roll, left roll. Let's go stable, pull up, pull down. It's all working. Level flight. Let's go ahead and test our rudder. This is right rudder. That's working fine. This is left rudder. That's working fine. All right, let's go back to base and see how well we can land. All right, so gotta be careful with the sensitivities there. All right, so everything seems to be working fine. Our camera seems to be working fine. You guys can adjust the sensitivity of the camera later on at a later date. Ah, sorry about that, had to drink water. And as you see, I lost one of my landing gears, so this is not going to go well. Um, dun, 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 dun. Come on. You know what? Who cares? Let's just let's just put it down. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and restart that crap. Come on. Hurry up. And uh, let's go back to the controls that we have. All right. So what else do we need all right so our roll is working fine our pitch is working fine and this uh yeah the yaw is working fine uh there's something you need to know uh hold throttle for web i forgot to tell you guys about this you guys will have it set to yes set it to no you do not want to hold square to hold your web you just want to take it to web and leave it there and not have to worry about it it'll just stay on web until you tell it not to stay on web anymore so hold throttle for web no um, so right now, let's go ahead and control uh, another important part. Um, the zoom button, okay, zoom button. You guys will have it for Z here. And by the way, this is found on common controls. Do not go here, what a lot of people do. Don't go here and zoom axis. Don't do that. You don't need to do this. Uh, at least not in this video. If you want, you can do that on your own time. Um, view controls, you go to view controls and zoom camera right here you want to press the left stick in that's the left stick in um why am i setting it for the left stick the reason i'm setting it for the left stick is because the left stick is what you use to turn left right up down that's essentially what you're going to use to aim you want to be able to simply press the left stick inside and zoom in there you zoom in with the left stick same stick you fly with that's going to allow you to have all of your aiming controls in the same place all right so we're good with that part these things that i taught you guys how to do now are probably the most important parts there is also one more important part actually uh now that i forgot uh your trim uh you're actually gonna use your keyboard for this all right for so trimming aircraft so let's go for this one first trim aircraft what does trim aircraft do if you're flying in simulator right obviously you're flying in simulator and um, you, um, you're flying at a particular speed and you see that your plane keeps pulling up or keeps pulling down or keeps doing something. Um, if you press the trim aircraft button, it will automatically trim it to fly straight and level, all right? 
this is basically straight and level flight. So you want to use your alt, right alt. This is the right alt key. Uh, reset trimming. I use my control, the right control. Okay, I don't use push or talk in here. So trimming aircraft, the right alt key. Reset trimming, the right control key. What reset trimming does is it basically takes it down to zero percent. All right. Now that's what we have to do it automatically, but we want to have the ability uh, to do it manually. All right. So we want to go ahead and take elevator trim axis. For this, I want to use my up, down, left, right arrow keys. All right. So elevator trim axis increase. We're gonna do the whoops. We're gonna go ahead and set this to be the up key. Decrease the value down key uh, and we do want to have relative control step here we want to have a step up of uh, eh, you know what yeah just one percent one percent step up um, and um, that's good yep that's good all right now aileron trim axis same thing but increase is going to be right and decre decrease is going to be left so same thing here one percent there we go that should be it. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and close this real quick. Test the trims, make sure it works. And there it goes. Elevator trim up, elevator trim down. Uh, let's set it to some ridiculous value. Uh, and then you want to reset it, just hit the right control. Boom, 0%. Uh, aileron trim, right. Aileron trim left works. Uh, let's just uh, set both if you want. Hit the right control. Boom, reset them to 0. Wonderful stuff. All right, let's go back. Uh, let's go ahead and save our controls real quick so that we don't lose anything. Uh, so yeah, now we're good. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, this part is uh, going to be important later. Uh, sense of flight zero. Okay, this is one more important part uh, that you guys need to pay attention to. Head movement, left and right only. You don't care about up and down, forward and back. All of this is bullshit. You just need to do left and right. And the reason that you want to do left and right is because, let me show you. For example, you have an enemy behind you, but, oh, guess what? You can't see him because you have this bullshit behind you. So what you want to do is you want to be able to sense. He, I'm assuming that you guys don't have either track IR or virtual reality or any of that, okay? You guys want to look behind you, but you can't because you have that shit behind you. So what do you do? You want to be able to move left and right on your cockpit just simply by hitting a button. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down to camera controls and you're going to go scroll down a little bit and here head movement left and right. So maximum value. Uh, this is going to be to the right. Hit the options key on your controller. Options key. Okay. This is the options key. All right. Minimum value. The share button. This is going to be the share button. Um, okay. Here's a little problem. You guys on PlayStation, if you guys hit the the options key it's going to take you to the main menu or not the main menu the options uh if you hit the share key it's going to take you to the whole bullshit of the share menu so that's going to be a little bit problematic for you guys so what i suggest you do um holy shit i honestly don't know uh okay what i suggest you guys on ps4 to do is okay i'm going to tell you i'm going to tell you guys in a second you guys on PC, leave it like this. This will work perfectly for you guys, okay? So ignore the next 10 seconds of this tutorial real quick. This is for PS4 players. Uh, if you're on PS4, what you can do to move your, le your head to the left is you want to hit... So to move your head to the right, hit L1 and then hit circle. L1 and circle, okay? And then for moving it to the left, same thing, L1 and square. Uh, let's go ahead and test how that works real quick. Um, so right here we're trying to look we're trying to look back. So I'm gonna hit L1 circle. See, it moves my head to the left. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and check it to the right. Let's uh, I'm sorry, left. Uh, let's go ahead and move our head to the left, and there we go. It works. There is, however, one problem. Um, when you do that, it modifies your speed, as you guys can see on the top throttle. I don't think it modifies it for PS4, um, because PS4 has a different uh, framework on that. But for you PC players, it will, so do not do that if you're on PC. If you're on PC, do not do what I just told you to do. If you're on PS4, go ahead and do it, see if it works. If it doesn't work, try a different set of controls uh, for that particular um, 
functionality, okay? But let's go back to the PC players. Um, PC players, moving head left and right, so maximum value. You want to hit the options key for right, and for left, you want to hit the share button. All right, that's going to work perfectly for you. And, um, yeah, I think that's uh, it for this one. What happens if I do this? Because I want it to be a little faster. I don't want it to be slow. All right, let's test this. Yep, there you go. So that works. The only thing is that, uh, just real quick, guys, I'm sorry. I haven't set this up in a while. Uh, do the same thing I just told you, but just a quick change. Uh, the maximum, actually hit the left. Not the left, I'm sorry, the share key for maximum. And for minimum, hit the options key. It's a little bit backwards if you think about it, but I'm going to show you why. When you're looking behind you, things are in reverse. So if you want to look to the left, now you hit the share key, and it's going to move your head to the left. If you're looking the other way, you want to move your head to the right, so you hit the options key. There you go. That's going to allow you to have a better visibility. Okay, so we got that part over with. Uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, pretty much the weapons. Oh, actually, no. There's one thing. Sorry, guys. Sorry. A little bit back and forth here. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to do this as quick as I can. This video is already long enough. Uh, let's do the the break. Left and right break. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use your break uh, on the runway. So, left break. Maximum. This is really easy. Hit circle. Yes. Hit add. Uh, we already have the circle set for the throttle. You know, to decrease the throttle. But hit add. And the reason for this is because when you touch down on the runway... What the heck do you want to do? You want to stop. You're not going to be pressing square to speed up. You're going to be pressing circle to stop. Uh, even though you set circle to be to slow down, you also want the circle to be the button that you use for applying the brakes. All right, so brakes are set. And for the right brake, same thing. Maximum value, circle, hit add. Okay. Um, wonderful. Now our brakes work. Now, this part are a pain in the ass. Um, please listen, guys. Uh, Gaijin did something to the game. And for some reason, watch what happens, okay? For some reason, at least for me, I'm going to hit the flaps down, okay? For example, flaps down, I always use the right D-pad. The right D-pad, okay? Flaps down, right D-pad. Okay? I'm going to hit close. So, if I hit the right D-pad right now, it should pull my flaps down. Well, I'm hitting it. Nothing happens. It doesn't register the right D-pad, even though it registers it in the control settings. Um, and it's not my controller, because I've tried several other controllers that I have, and none of them work for the D-pad on this game. Uh, so, it's easy. It's easy to fix. All you need to do is we need to use a modifier. So, for flaps down, you're actually going to hit L1, or the left upper trigger, L1, uh, not the bottom one, the top one. Um, and then you also want to hit the right D-pad. So I'm, I'm pressing two buttons right now. I'm pressing the L1 and the right D-pad. Boom. So right now, when I test that and I hit the L1 and the right D-pad, there it goes. Flaps goes to combat, press it again. Flaps go to takeoff, press it again. Flaps go to landing. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that from now on, our main modifier control uh, or button will be the L1. So the only functionality of the L1 will be a modifier. That's what the L1 key is for us right now, a modifier. All right, so flaps up, L1 plus left D-pad. Okay, very important stuff. Uh, Ignite boosters. Uh, for igniting the boosters, I like to set that to be the... Oh, shit. Well, I forgot about that one. Uh, okay, easy. Ignite booster. Hit L1 and both of your triggers. So I'm pressing three keys right now. Okay? I pressed L1 and both my triggers. Let's see if that works. It should say no air brakes available for these aircraft. Let's put our flaps up real quick. Okay. L1 and both our triggers. There you go. There are no boosters. Okay? So... All right, L1, both triggers, no boosters. Good. So the boosters button is working. 
And now we want to do toggle the air brake. This one is really simple. This one, you're going to press the two lower triggers together. Basically, the buttons that you set up for left rudder and right rudder, yeah, just press them both at the same time. That's it. Press them both at the same time. What that's going to do is when you're in game and you're flying, you can still use the left rudder. See, as you can see, it's uh, it's moving right there on the side of this on the screen. If you look at the rudder, I'm moving it to the right right now. And then I'm moving it to the left. There you go. See, it works. But if you press them both together, boom. See, no air brake. Um, it, it will be the air brake button. So it's just a matter of getting used to these controls. Uh, they're really easy. The only kind of a pain in the ass thing is the fact that you have to press L1 and the right D-pad. If you want to use the D-pad, you have to press the L1 key, basically, which is a real pain in the ass. The next thing is a toggle, uh, toggle the gear. This will be up on your D-pad, but obviously you have to press L1 plus the up D-pad, otherwise it won't work. Drag shoot, same thing, but down D-pad. So L1 plus down D-pad. Um, hit close, continue anyway. Let's go ahead and check those things out. So L1, down D-pad, no shoot. So that works. Uh, flaps are working, pull them back up, working. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our engines on and check if our landing gear is working or the lever. So let's go ahead and speed this baby up. Ah, shit. I sped up a little bit too fast there. Come on. There we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and take our flaps down to landing to maximize our um, speed on takeoff. And let's do L1 plus up. And there you go. So our gear is coming up. That's great. All right, let's go ahead and restart this. We don't want to have to waste time by landing. Uh, so all the controls are working uh, perfectly fine uh, so far. Um, so yeah, all right, let's go to weaponry now. This is this is important. Um, so what you want to do for the weaponry part is uh, small calibers. That's going to be your R1. Okay, that's small calibers R1. Large calibers the triangle. The triangle. Okay, so for you guys on Xbox, this is what I'm pressing for large caliber. For small caliber, this is what I'm pressing. Right bumper. This is the right bumper. Um, additional guns, you want to also uh, uh, do... Wait, what would you do for this? Um, yeah, additional guns, also the triangle. This is the triangle for PS4 players. Triangle and triangle for PS4 players, okay? Uh, dropping bombs. So, okay. To drop bombs, let's go ahead and use, um, let's go ahead and use the X. All right, use the X. Xbox players, that's the A. Just, you Xbox players, just look at what's in here, and that's the button that's going to be for you. But for PS4 players, just, yeah, the X. Uh, and um, to fire rockets, uh, we're actually going to press L1 plus the X. So to drop a bomb, simply press the the X. And to fire a rocket, you're going to have to press uh, the L1 plus the X. All right? So that's that. And these ones get a little bit tricky because we're starting to get to that point where we're kind of running out of buttons so yeah uh okay so what do you want to do now um the next thing you need to do is weapon lock so let's say that you guys are flying a jet that has uh missiles well we need to set up a button to activate the lock uh, so what i'm going to set up for that is going to be the l1 plus the options key that's L1 plus the options key, okay? Again, L1 plus the options key, damn it, will be to weapon lock. So fire air-to-air -air missile. How do we fire an air-to-air -air missile? Um, we're going to use the L1 plus R1. I don't think that's a good idea because that's probably going to give us... Yeah, all right, yeah, don't, don't do what I just told you to do because if you fire the missile using that control setup that I just told you, it's also going to fire your guns and you don't want to waste ammo. So for this one, you're going to set it up to be... Um, 
this is this is this is hard. I'm running out of buttons. Just set it up to be the PlayStation button. So you guys know that little PSN button between the two sticks? Yeah. That's gonna be the button you're gonna use to fire your air to air missiles. Uh, I'm also modifying my controllers here as I go. Slightly. So okay, that should work. Uh, another important thing, uh, thing probably the last important thing you need to do here is go to common controls, and for the map, the map is really important. Set that up to be the touchpad. Just press the touchpad. Damn it. There you go. Just press the touchpad, and that will activate your uh, your map. So let's test that. There you go. There's the map. Okay. Great. Um, PSM button for fire air to air missile works. And how do we activate weapon lock? L1 plus. Ah, shit. That's. See, I'm pressing two buttons, but yet when I press one, it's just like. It wants to do other stuff too. So, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, let's go back down to weapon lock. Let's go ahead and modify this. I uh, hate how Gaijin did this. Uh, okay, so weapon lock. Uh, what should we set the weapon lock to be? Um, we can tell it to be... <laughs> Do L1 plus a square. L1 plus the square. Mm, I don't know. Because if you do that, it's going to want to... Like, if you press two buttons at the same time, that shouldn't affect other buttons. Like, other functions that are set for a particular button that you're also pressing in combination with another one. It shouldn't affect them. But it does. So I'm having a pretty hard time telling you guys uh, what to do now. Air to ground missile, by the way, I am not going to show you guys how to set this up. You guys can figure this one out um, because you have to set up a button to fire it and you also have to set up the axis to to guide them yourself. Uh, but, yeah. So I'm just kind of having a hard time to what to set this, uh, this right here to be. Um, oh, man. Um... How do we activate the lock? Let's go with... I'm going to have to use the keyboard. And I don't want to use the keyboard, but... Okay, you know what? Hit L1 and the right stick inside. L1 and the right stick inside. There. Uh, I kind of don't like that either, because uh, what happens if you're if you have your view like this, and you hit L1 plus that you're gonna lose your target so that's also not a good idea you see i'm running into a little bit of trouble here okay you know what you guys can figure out what you want your weapon lock to be i'm gonna let leave that to your imagination because if if i keep doing this the video is gonna be two hours long all right uh reload guns you can set that to r on the keyboard that's pretty standard everybody has it on r on the keyboard um if you're on ps4 just basically wait till your guns run out <laughs> assuming you're not playing like, assuming you're playing simulator on a custom battle or something and you have the ability to reload your guns. Um, so let's go through the control setup. I believe that we are good to go. Mm -hmm. Yep, this looks good. Uh, there's just one thing that we need to do. Uh, we don't really need to do it. You guys can stick around for that if you want. But pretty much we're done already. If you guys want to stick around for this part, stick around. If not, be my guest. Uh, this is going to be toggle the gunners. I'm going to use my keyboard a little bit for this. Backspace is going to toggle my gunners. Um, and then gunner view sensitivity. That, that's actually... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is I want to set small caliber guns. I want to be able to fire these with my middle mouse button. Come on. I also want to add the middle mouse button here and the large caliber middle mouse button and the additional guns middle mouse button. 
why the heck am I doing this? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because if we want to fly a bomber, we also want to be able to shoot with the mouse, not the PS4 controller. That That's absurd. Uh, let's go ahead and quickly save our control setup. There you go. Save that real quick. Uh, and... Uh, yeah. That, um... That's going to be it for this video. I'm just going to quickly show you guys what I mean. Uh, real fast. I want to give you guys a quick idea of how you would handle this. Uh, there's also something else. Uh, the con toggle views. You can set that to be your V. Uh, that's going to work fine. Saver controls. Yes, replace continue anyway all right that way we can switch between this there you go see so if we hit the middle mouse button we can shoot our guns all right so that's a great setup right there let's go ahead and turn our uh, engines on real quick and i'm gonna speed us up i want to show you guys something really crucial uh, if you go here to options and then you go to and you go to air battle settings um let me see. Hang on a second, guys. Okay. Autopilot for gunner and bomb sight modes. You want to have this to know. Because that way, you can actually fly the plane manually as you are on the um, gunner sights. All right? And holy crap. I know this video is probably already really long. Come on. Stop turning to the left. I want to show you what I mean real quick, guys so sorry for the long video i will put timestamps uh, i'm gonna try to put timestamps on the description so that you guys know where to go to get your information all right these bombs are just weighing me down there you go all right anyways let's go ahead into the gunner view all right so watch i can fly the plane and also i can shoot with my gunners I have done this multiple times and I've gotten God knows how many kills doing this uh, because people people think they can just fly behind me but actually I can maneuver the plane and at the same time I can shoot at them with a 13 millimeter. See like this guy's right here. Um, I literally could follow them right now if I wanted. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, it's great for simulator. You can maneuver the plane and at the same time you can shoot with your gunners. Uh, but anyways, aside from that, I'm not going to make the video any longer. I believe that is all that we have to set up. Uh, everything else that needs to be set up, you guys can pretty much figure that out on your own because it's not really anything crucial, alright? It's not really anything that you need to have. Uh, it's not a life or death kind of thing. You can, you guys can pick that for yourselves, alright? But the most important things, I already helped you set them up and that's the view control, the pitch roll and yaw axis. Uh, gear control, uh, the brakes, the flaps, uh, the parachutes, I forgot to put my gears up, uh, also the air brakes, see, I press both of my, uh, both of my bumpers, or the, you know, the, the, the two buttons that I set for my rudder, my yaw, I press them both at the same time, boom, I get my spoilers out, or air brakes, alright, and if I press, uh, for example, L1 plus those two, I get boosters if I have them, but I don't have them on this plane. So, um, this is for launching missiles, the PlayStation button, and the touch screen, that's for the map. So, everything's working great. Uh, bombs on X, uh, speed reduce on circle, speed increase on square. Uh, the triangle is for big guns or large guns, and the R1 is for smaller guns. You can shoot both at the same time if you want. Uh, so zoom in and center view like that. So everything's working perfectly fine. This is exactly how I have my controls. Uh, it's a wonderful setup and it will do wonders. I promise you guys it will. Um, on that note, I will end this video now. Finally. Whew. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, remember, I will make a Reddit post about this so you guys can follow up on the instructions a lot easier. Uh, at the time of the upload, I'm still I'm still writing the the Reddit post. But you know, if you're watching this like in the near future, like a few hours from now or a day, 
the post should be up. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, uh, and I will catch you guys in the next video. God bless all of you.